I'm Annie Carlano. I'm the Senior Curator of Craft Design and Fashion here at the Mint Museum and the co-curator of Craft in the Laboratory, the Science of Making Things, which is the theme of the new installation in our craft and design galleries, which I hope you have all seen or will see after our program today. I am really super thrilled um, to introduce our speaker today. Um, this is her return to Charlotte and her return to the Mint. Um, and you are in for a treat. Sylvia Levinson is an amazing artist and a resilient, um, dynamic woman. She's a survivor. She's a descendant of Russian Jewish refugees who fled the 1904 revolution um, and went to Argentina for safety and a better life. However, during the dictatorship of General Jorge Rafael uh, Videla, 30,000 people known as the, uh, I'll say it in English, disappeared, um, were eliminated, including members of Sylvia Levinson's family. So, uprooted again, um, she with her family moved, emigrated to Italy in 1980, 81, in 1980. Sylvia is actually trained uh, in Argentina uh, as a painter and in graphic arts. But in 1987, she came upon a glass magazine and wound up um, following uh, a workshop with Bertil Valin, the great Swedish um, artist who works with cast glass, and we have one of his sculptures upstairs. And um, she became interested in, of course, new, in a new country, how could she as an artist express herself working in a solitary way? And she realized you could do that with glass. And being in Italy, um, glass is a very prominent medium, but she didn't, you know, pursue like glass blowing, which all the men were doing. Um, she found her own way, um, sort of influenced in part by Bertil Valin. Um, and in 1995, she, I mean, I, really, I know her history. In 1995, she was a resident at Bullseye Glass in Portland, Oregon, and that was the beginning of the world taking notice in a whole series of residencies and workshops and museum shows um, that eventually led to um, her receiving many important awards. In 2004, Corning Museum honored her, the Rocco uh, Award, and then shortly thereafter, she was uh, shortlisted for the most prestigious Bombay Prize from the UK. Her work, um, I, I started out by saying she's an artist and an activist, and her work is never just about herself. Her work and her heart is in um, community and really pressing social issues. She's not, she's fearless, I would say, as a, as a human being and as an artist. And her work, which she will talk about, um, is in collections throughout the globe, including every major museum that has glass, such as Corning, Museum of Fine Arts, Houston in this country, our collection, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but also, is it 130 pieces of glass that, they, that went to? Now this, I have to, there's a major collection, the Alexander Tutsek Stiftung collection, in Munich that just a few years ago acquired a great body of her work because she's now legendary. So um, she's also a gifted teacher and one of the reasons she came back to Charlotte was um, at the invitation of Craft and Trade Academy and Muller Corporation and the Mint Museum. And at Craft and Trade, she has led a workshop um, that she will tell you about. And I'm just going to give a shout out to the teacher and the students at Olympics High School. Thank you for coming and spending your Sunday with us. And we're going to hear more about what you've been doing with Sylvia um, 
And before we start the program, I just want to remind you to please silence your cell phones out of respect for the speaker and everybody else here. And then at the end of um, Sylvia's talk, we will have a Q&A period so you have an opportunity to ask her questions. Sylvia? Hi, I am so happy of being here after some, I think, four years because of the COVID, we don't know exactly. <laughs> Five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I am, uh, yeah, I'm so happy. And also uh, in this lecture, I will speak about my own work. So uh, I work primarily in glass, as uh, Annie said. And also I will show you some of the projects that I made with other artists and other people. I love to work, uh, to share and work with projects with uh, other students and artists. And at the end I will show you and I will speak a lot about the project we made together with the Olympic um, uh, Art School, IT School. Um, okay, I was born in Argentina and uh, I emigrated to Italy a lot of years ago with my um, son that he was 11 months and my daughter, she was four years old. And, um, and my, our idea was to stay for a while in Italy. I came back in Argentina, but actually I remained there. And so, um, as Annie say, I started working with glass and my first pieces were connected to the idea of travel. So I made glass books and sort of suitcases, and you can see in my first pieces, I was in between uh, being a little graphic and more that uh, a sculpture. I mean, it was something in the middle that I was making my research. So for me, uh, thinking, making, and the process is something that is completely connected. So I started making some pieces about the tensions in daily life. And I think I started working with glass because glass is a material that we use in our houses. We feel protected by glass and isolated in some way. But on the other hand, also we trust in glass because we put the glass in our mouth. That is the most important part of our body, is the entrance. But on the other hand, we know that glass can break and hurt us. So I was interested in this uh, ambiguity of the material. And so I, I use other materials, but I have to say that the most part of my work is made in glass. So I started exploring also the idea of the, what we add of, uh, to our bodies. And so I start with the Cinderella shoes, but I had to put an, a nail inside because for me it represented the impossibility of the Cinderella dream. That means that someone can save us or uh, find a solution for our lives. So for a while I was connected to this idea of uh, uh, fashion in some way. And uh, so my work, usually when people see my work, uh, is because it's made in glass, is, is nice, but in the second glance can see that there is something that maybe doesn't work or something that looks strange, and I like this ambiguity. After I started working with the idea of the childhood, and I remember when I was a little child in Argentina, uh, my mother used to buy um, a pair of shoes that we had to use during the, all the year. Uh, maybe because the shoes in Argentina was the low quality, maybe because we didn't have enough money, but at a certain moment of our year, a nail came out and my sister Bibi and me, with a stone or with a hammer, we tried to fix that. And for me, it represented also uh, how I can live. I mean, there is something, there is always something that disturbs me, <laughs> that I, I feel not comfortable in life, but I can, I can walk. So that is something that represents me. And, uh, and also, I think uh, the children and the life of children, uh, usually they know 
in the families they know more that we feel, so I was exploring all this area with, with my work. And at a certain moment, I, I started making collage with uh, my uh, photos of my sister Vivi and me and animals, and I start to make these strange little girls. I start with the bunny because I thought that I was the bunny because I was a little shy, even if now it's not so clear that I'm shy. But I, and, uh, and so the idea of those strange little girls is that they have the head, the hands, and the, and the feet that are made in glass. And the rest of the body is, is textile and other materials. And so I made a, a black sheep. And, uh, and actually, uh, this is a, a deer that is in Scotland right now. And I was surprised at how uh, some people and my friends started speaking with me about how they feel like strange little kids. No? And uh, so this is the, in the Toledo Art Museum. And, but for me, it was a fantastic experience. Uh, I, I am making, now I'm making the last one that is waiting for me in the studio, that is a bear. And, um, and represent for me this age when we don't know what is good or bad. Sometimes parents or people are surprised that the kids can be cruel with the animals or can, because they don't know how to deal with that. But I, I was exploring this age. So, and there is a project that I'm, ve I'm very proud of, that is the Missing Identity Project that, as Annie say, during, uh, in Argentina, during the dictatorship, uh, 30,000 people disappear. And what happened also that there were some uh, women and girls that are, they were pregnant, and uh, so the military decided to uh, keeping life them until the kids was uh, born, and after kill the, the mother and give in uh, illegal adoption to the children, not to, uh, to other uh, the children in illegal adoption to other families connected to military. And so the mothers of Plaza de Mayo understood that they were looking for their kids and for the uh, son and daughters, but they knew also that some daughters were pregnant. And so she, they made a list of 500 kids that they were not able to find. And with the help of the scientists from America, they made a DNA bank, and they tried to recover the identity of them because they say that it was important to know what, who they were, also even if they had an adoptive, uh, an adoptive family. Uh, they need to know, uh, they, there was another family looking for them. So I was working with uh, these grandmothers that they are fantastic and I, I learned a lot from them. And uh, so thanks to them, 130 uh, kids recovered their own identity. So my work was to make this show that was starting the house of the uh, Madres of Plaza de Mayo in, uh, in Argentina, after they went to Montevideo in Uruguay, where we made also some workshop with the kids about uh, the identity. And after the show went to the University Museum in Washington, and I made all these um, uh, baby uh, clothes connected with the, uh, with the kids ke, that uh, recover their own identity. So when I start with this project, I made 118, and now I made 130. I, I arrived until that. So after that, the show was traveling a lot, and I was happy because <clears throat> the grandmother said that they knew that a lot of uh, um, uh, grandchildren uh, were living outside from Argentina. So we had some experience where someone uh, connected us and we put in contact with the grandmother. So it was, for me, a fantastic experience. And also because in any place, I found people, <clears throat> different people who helped me in installing the pieces, organized everything. 
This is the show in the Glass Museum in Murano, in the new museum. And, uh, and also it was funny because the people who arrived there to visit the show from Murano, all people asked me um, who made the pieces because the tradition in Murano is that you have a project and the blower will make it for you. That is fantastic, I don't have anything against that. But they don't used to make the, uh, their own work. So, and I had to explain, no, no, I made that, maybe it's not perfect <laughs> what I made for myself. And so they were so surprised. Uh, after the, the show, we went to Bullseye por projects in Portland and, um, and also finished in Santo Domingo. So in my work, I am um, connected always. Uh, I used to see what is happening around me. And in 2000, in 2000 2001, in Italy, we received a lot of uh, immigrants from Albania. And even if the distance we are so close, uh, a lot of people died in the travel. That it was incredible for me, especially kids. I have to say that uh, I, I am okay. I am an immigrant, and uh, I, I can understand that it's something that I cannot accept. That people have to risk for for looking only for surviving, surviving. So I made this series of uh, boats that are the boats that kids use uh, for for playing, and I paint with uh, black, and I made the, the, um, the oars in glass, speaking about the difficulty of the travel as new Ulysses. So in 2015, I was invited by Berlin Glass uh, to make a residency, and uh, I liked it a lot, it was fantastic. I wanted to make uh, some, uh, some pieces with blowing glass, uh, and so, we made the molds. They, they blow inside my molds. After I, I opened the molds and I was happy working there. And that is was the result. So I made the molds with the floaties. I used the real floaties and I liked a lot this experience. So, and I, may, I was in contact with Nadania Idris that she's the director of uh, Berlin Glass. And so she invited me to be part of an other project that is Multaka project, that it was <clears throat> the idea of working with refugees in Berlin. So, and in Berlin there is a big museum, a Pergamon Museum, that is about, um, is, uh, about uh, um, uh, Middle East, uh, Islamic, sorry, Islamic artwork. And so they have a lot of pieces in the museum connected to the glass. And the idea of these uh, uh, workshops was to speak about uh, that if we can use glass now, it's because uh, the glass was able to travel. The technology, the technology was able to travel from Iran, Turkey, and with the Phoenicians to Egypt and China and Italy. And so we cannot stop that. So for them, for me, it was a fantastic experience also. And we made this, this uh, several times. And so after, after that, I was invited to be part of another project for the British uh, Glass Biennale. And uh, that uh, we decided to invite refugees that they were awaiting in the uh, UK for having the documentation. And so all those people uh, were able, they were incredible because they start in Africa, cross uh, uh, the Mediterranean, cross Europe for arriving to UK, now that they made an incredible travel. And so because they was not able to work, they were so happy of making this mural that we made together in glass. And I was so surprised because they become really good in making something that usually we think that is so difficult to do. So in this case, I was like a facilitator because with the help of other um, artists, we, they asked us the color of the glass they needed. We were able to show how to cut glass and they were making uh, this experience. For me, it was incredible. And uh, so the idea is, was memory of home because they, we asked them to think 
to something that they live in their in that they lived in their homes. So one was about the car that he was that he, he had a car in Syria so he was not able to use anymore or whatever they wanted to 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 think to their own country. So I am not uh, when I make these sort of projects it's not because I am uh, good or I can, I want to be a good person, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's because I, I like to work with other people. I mean, usually I will be in my studio working together and I like to share and, uh, and in a certain way uh, exchange the glance that we have above uh, on, on the world. So another topic that I was very, uh, I very sensitive was the violence against women. So I made this uh, um, uh, piece uh, installation with the IKEA furniture and where instead to have the fruits in the bowls, there is hand grenades and everything uh, pretend that is perfect, but there is not perfect. And so this is the piece that was in the museum and I'm so happy for that because I mean, uh, according to the United Nations uh, study, there are 50,000 50, uh, 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 women that uh, are killed every year, and uh, and, the, and, the, and the house is the most difficult, it's the most uh, dangerous place for them. So this is how I make this uh, um, cake. I wanted to make a big cake. Uh, uh, nice, wonderful, but empty and fragile. And that is how I was installing, installing the piece when I wanted to make the photo of, my, of the piece. And, uh, and I made also other pieces connected with this idea of the hand grenade that is, is not exploded, but is, is there for remembering us that is, there is you, we cannot accept the violence even if it's in, in the name of love, you know? So, and during the pandemic and the lockdown, I was, I was reading that a, a lot of, in all the world, in a lot of places, the uh, amount of violence against women was higher because for some women, they come like the opportunity of living with the enemy and they were not able to go out. And so I remember that I made a mask with the hand grenade and I make a photo, a selfie. And after I was contacted by a group of uh, uh, women who wo was working with this topic in, in the gallery. And they asked me to make, uh, we made three, 300 uh, screen printed uh, mask with the hand grenade we, we sold online for raising money for this association. And I like it a lot, the idea of the association was a small one, so that I knew that those, this money will be used for, in this case, for having the driving uh, license for the women that uh, they were living alone uh, after suffering violence. And I had another project that is, I say, stop, uh, where I asked um, online the photos of people that I didn't know, the other women, and I, I, I used the photographic process for that, and I added the, the, the word stop, basta, in, uh, enough in all the languages that I didn't know, so I have to contact, sorry, I have to contact other women that I never met, uh, asking them to translate that. So, and I showed this, installation in the uh, Argentinian embassy in Washington, D.C. during the pandemic. And another uh, project that I was making recently with my, um, with my daughter, that she's an artist too, Natalia Saurin, is the most dangerous place. We wanted to use the place because we wanted to speak about what happened in the house and so, and also we collect a lot of uh, sentences used by people and by the press for banalizing or um, uh, justify 
the, the violence against women, like he was a nice boy, uh, maybe she was, uh, uh, she had a, a mini skirt and or she was drinking. And so we uh, print these uh, sentences on the plates. And our first show was in the uh, old uh, uh, palace in Florence, in Italy. We were looking for places, not for galleries, but for places where people was able to enter and see. And so that was our first uh, uh, show. And um, it's the uh, 25 November, the day, the day dedicated against the violence against women. And after we had the, in a space in Milan, in the Palace Reale, that is in the, in the square of downtown, but because the city, the Milan was closed uh, for the pandemic, we had to make everything before, and we didn't know how to deal with that. So we asked some of our friends to come to the Duomo uh, Square, and we made the photos, and we used these photos for, uh, in the <coughs> social media. And, and the last uh, series of this, of this project was to invite people to add, add the, the decals, the text, the words on the plates. So we asked people to come to us with a plate from home and to work with us modifying the plates with these sentences or words. And uh, so we invite uh, kids, uh, women, girls and uh, boys. And at the end, we fire the pieces in the kiln, but after we uh, crush the, the, the plates, because at the end, what we wanted to say is that we want to, to stop that. And actually, that we, you see how we, we ask people to be part of this project. And I like uh, the, uh, this project a lot because we start in speaking with a lot of people. And so at the end, thanks to the administration in Milan, in Rome, in Verona, in Buenos Aires, the, the video was um, uh, projected in the, in, the, in, the, in the city. So it was important for what we wanted to see, what we wanted to know. So uh, as I told you before, for me, teaching uh, is important, is sharing is very important. So, this is, I was teaching a lot around the world, and this is also in my own studio. I think that uh, uh, sharing is not only sharing information or sharing techniques, but it's about sharing uh, feelings and to influence each other. And for this reason, when, um, uh, when craft and trade uh, invited me to come here uh, to Charlotte for making this workshop, I say absolutely yes. <laughs> no? Miller Corporation and, uh, and a craft and, and, and trade invited me to make a workshop. And so, and I was, I, I used to make some uh, workshops in my studio with kids from the high school. And uh, so, for example, in this case, they came in March in my studio and they were working, making some tiles in glass, and also we modify uh, and recycle some glasses, and the topic was the, um, the climatic change. And so at the end, they made a show for, with an auction for uh, uh, making some money for uh, the homeless and association that was working with homeless there. So at the end, in this case, the gallery who organized everything, they show my work together to the, show, uh, to the pieces of the boys and the girls. So it was so important for me. So actually now I, um, I will speak more about why I am here and why we have all these fantastic ties. And this is about this workshop that I was invited to make. And this is uh, something that uh, we are making together with the Craft and Trade Academy and the Mint Museum. And so in the beginning, I, um, and the, in, the, uh, uh, in, the, in the artist in the high school, I, 
In the beginning, we were speaking about the technique of what is screen printing, and so the students start and, and, and learning and using for making some, uh, for printing on paper in the beginning, and after, okay, I, I brought with me some um, uh, screens because that we need to have in advance. And, uh, and after the students, they come to use this technique and uh, for making, for printing on paper, for printing on uh, t-shirts. And, and I liked it a lot because they were so creative and, uh, and they have a, a it, they was making something that, I mean, usually when you make uh, screen printing is a technique, but they started making screen printing and painting and adding, so it was fantastic. And the result was, and also when we started speaking about that, I showed the works of Andy Warhol or other artists who they didn't, was, they didn't look for the perfection, so I told them, forget this, it's not about the perfect screen printer, and they made a wonderful work. So. I, we made the, the, the t-shirts, we make, uh, we work on paper, and, uh, and after they help each other, and uh, so absolutely they, and also they invite, I mean, they was making this technique in a different way as I would make, and so finally the, this mural, will be uh, installed in the uh, Craft and the Trade uh, Academy. And, uh, and it will be like the memory of these two days. And, uh, and I'm very grateful to the uh, teachers, uh, art teachers of the Olympic High School that they were so enthusiastic also about this project. So I'm not speaking here about how big I am as an artist or how successful I, I am. I mean, I am speaking about a project where I enjoy so much and where the uh, kids uh, had the opportunity of uh, knowing a new technique and saying something about inclusion and, uh, and, 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 the, and the diversity. Because we start saying that, I say, I am I am a woman, I am from Argentina, I'm living in Italy, I am an artist, but this is not enough to define me. And I am different to other people, not because of my, uh, the color of my, uh, my, my skin, because I am different, and all of us, we are different, and we have to live in this world, you know? So that was a little bit the idea of this work that we made together, and uh, yeah, I have to say that I was completely delighted of that. So they started making screen printing after they modified that, and that is the result of the diversity of different uh, glances that we have here. So um, I have to say that uh, uh, it will be fantastic when the work will be installed. And, um, and this is, thank you so much.